Oh, the sun, the sun, the sun. Here comes the sun. Because it's about to go behind that peak. Oh, thing of beauty. I'm with Coleman Fung, and we are in Namibia on a shoot together. And Coleman, it's uh, been six months and half a world away than we were in China together. Very remote. <laughs> yeah. both, well, both were kind of remote. I think we're even more remote here. But that, that's, an, that's a, a story for another time. Uh, but let's have a look at some of these shots. And uh, these first ones uh, were ones that we took uh, early one morning on uh, the Li River. Mm -hmm. These are of the traditional uh, uh, fishermen who uh, use cormorants uh, to uh, round up uh, the fish and uh, throw their uh, nets in. And these are lead-weighted uh, nets. And uh, of course, the funny thing is, uh, the first time I showed this to someone, they said, how did you get those Photoshop selection marching ants <laughs> in your print? <laughs> and of course, that's not what it is. Very good. Let's do it again. Now, you were in a different position than me, weren't you? Yes, I was higher up. I was in the back. We, we were on some kind of like concrete landing, yep. a boat launch area. Mm -hmm. And what's fascinating, again, the other difference is you decided to print it in black and white and me in color. Excellent. Why were you working in black and white? Oh, I always love black and white. And so whenever I see a picture that has potential in black and white, I would play around with that. Mm -hmm. So in this particular example, I really love to sort of push the shape, the form out more. So, and also make it a, a bit more moody. It, it holds up well, it works very well in, in black and white. Right. Here's one more of mine, mm -hmm. uh, just uh, maybe giving a, a better sense of that whole situation. Mm -hmm. Tell them to keep coming. And I think what needs to be said here is uh, the shot's a bit of a fake. Uh, you know, these were set up, we'd hired these fishermen who traditionally don't wear these uh, ancient costumes, uh, but they own them, they have them. Tour boats. Nevertheless, uh, it, one never can photograph these people uh, actually doing their fishing simply because they do it at night. So any photograph anyone ever takes of these mm -hmm. uh, is going to be uh, one that was uh, in some way kind of faked. And I love to hear the fact that the sun is behind uh, the mist and yep. uh, just is this uh, little white dot. So that works well. Tell them to spread out forward, backwards. Yeah, maybe let's have one of the guys go out at about 20 meters. Okay, the guy in the, here, just back a little bit, back a little bit. They're too symmetrical. They're like, these two are too close to each yeah. other, the back is too close. Yeah. yeah. They need we, to have one further in, one further out, one like... Yeah, we need to spread them, get one of the guys, excuse me. I would like this guy over here to come in closer. Yeah, and not to look at us. Yeah, have it have all of them shift over a little bit. Goddamn tour boats. You know, all kinds of variables. Light is perfect now. Light is absolutely perfect. That's awesome. 
What's your next one? Okay. Oh, right, the, uh, uh, the fishermen. This uh, is actually, they were just getting ready. That's right, getting their lanterns going yep. and so forth. Right. So this one, I was very lucky. It was a handheld picture. Mm -hmm. 5D. Yeah, I guess the 5D had just come out. It just came out. That's right. And they didn't have the bracket, so I couldn't even put the 5D on the tripod. <laughs> right. So that's why I was walking around uh, hand holding it. Right. Now, that must have been high ISO. Uh, yes, 800. Wow. Yeah. Well, here, this is, this is another example of very high ISO. This was done, I guess it was the day before. Uh, we were on the river and uh, we, we knew that the full moon was going to rise and then we had a little bit of a, a silly situation because we knew exactly where it was going to rise except we were wrong <laughs> because we hadn't calculated for the fact that it ri was rising behind these hills mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and by the time we finally saw it and it got out, got out of the murk uh, it had positioned itself there and I can't tell you the number of people who've looked at this and said oh Photoshop you put the moon there but would you testify? Yes, that that's this, the real this is thing. The way it was, <laughs> and I don't remember exactly, but uh, this must have been ISO 1600. It was really dark at this point, mm -hmm. uh, but it's kind of moody and uh, it, it works relatively well. To the right, please. <laughs> Over there. The sun is up somewhere. <laughs> Oh yes, when this starts to clear in here, it's going to be spectacular. If you could just pass me my bag, but... Yeah, 300. What do you have next? We oh, this is the Yellow, Yellow Mountain. Mountains. Yes. Wang Shan, is that how it's pronounced? Yeah. Wang Shan. Wang Shan. I can't pronounce it. Close enough. <laughs> my, my Mandarin is terrible, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, in yours, w was this infrared? Yes. Tell me about what you were using. Okay, this is sort of a homemade infrared device using the Kodak uh, Proback. This is a Kodak DCS Proback? Yes, because you can actually remove the filter, the oh, inf yeah. infrared cut filter. Mm -hmm. So I bought an extra filter, we, you know, broke the glass, right. and then try you're, out... You're a brave man! <laughs> try out different uh, filter. So mm -hmm. this is actually a 25.8, not okay. true infrared. Right. But it's clearly given you, yes, you know, the, the, the infrared look. look. Yeah, which is yes. great. That's a lovely photograph. Yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh, ooh. This is an ooh, ooh moment, Thomas. Very nice.
This is one of those situations where a fraction of an inch in the camera position makes a difference. Slightest change in focal length and you include or exclude something. If you want to be shooting a prime lens for image quality, but you want to zoom for positioning. Feel like I'm in the middle of a Chinese painting. Just every ingredient, the pines, the fall foliage, the fog, the rain, the mist. Well, we were so lucky on this shoot because I've talked to people who've been there right. and said, how did you get that fog? And for the two days that we were there, it was just these yep. beautiful Perfect. foggy mornings. Mm -hmm. Quite an engineering job building these staircases. Oh my goodness. Oh, 
Oh golly gosh. Wow. Can't believe how lucky we were to be here for fall color. Now you did a very long hike that I didn't do. Didn't yes. You? This is actually very close to the middle of the day, so the lighting is not the best, but for infrared, I guess, it's workable. Mm -hmm. So we were actually, Thomas and I were walking up these steps forever long. <laughs> right. <laughs> no wailing. That's, that's why I didn't go. Right. So, but it was fun, and then I just turned around while hiking up, and then mm -hmm. I got this view. Yeah, that's fabulous. That's, that's so archetypal for the classic Chinese landscape. Uh, here, of course, what captured me was this uh, cliff background. face yeah. in the background. It just kept coming in and out of the mist, mm -hmm. and this was one of maybe 20 or 30 frames that I took over a period of uh, five or ten minutes, where I've got just the right combination of exposing the cliff face here. And yeah, a lot of these I was really tempted to interpret in black and white, except here, the color really works. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the color contrast, not just the tonality contrast mm -hmm. uh, that makes it. And here's another example right. of that, where originally I did a black and white print, mm -hmm. and it, I think there was a, a dust spot, and I went in, uh, went up to 100% with the cloning tool, and then I went, wait a second, that's green. I've, I've got green there. So I did this interpretation, which is a color print, but uh, the only color is just this little touch of green here. And to me, this is so reminiscent of uh, the, the uh, traditional Chinese paintings, which before having gone to the Yellow Mountains, I always thought were some kind of invented... Abstract yeah, representation. Yeah, abstract representation of maybe the mythology, Chinese mythology. And then I went, no, this is real. <laughs> this is a real place. And what a great place to do shooting.